I'm always looking for ways to make my workflow more efficient, and that's why I decided to make this custom macro pad. I'm a complete novice when it comes to electronics, but as I did a bit of research, I discovered making something like this was way easier than I thought it would be. You really don't need any previous knowledge in coding or wiring to build something like this in a weekend. I know I could have bought something with similar functionality for around the cost I spent building this, but my hope is to continue to develop my skills and to take on more advanced projects to really take my productivity to that next level. All files for this project are linked in the description. Let's get to the details of the design. For the brains in the macro pad I chose an Arduino Pro Micro. I went with an Arduino because of the large community using it and the vast amount of learning resources available. During my research, I was surprised to learn that most Arduinos are actually not suitable to be used as USB input devices. The Pro Micro uses an Atmega 32U4 chip, which is able to emulate keyboard inputs, which is why it was chosen for this build. It also has a nice compact form factor, which will help keep things as small as possible. To make things simple, I decided to have all the electronic components attached to a flat mounting plate. This was mainly done so I'd have good access to both sides for soldering. As you can see, there's a small recessed area for the Arduino, with holes to allow for wires to be passed through from the bottom. The key switches will snap into the 13 cutout locations shown here. For key switches, I chose Cherry MX Blues, at least what I ordered was Cherry MX Blues, which showed up might be knockoffs, I can't really tell. Either way, they have a nice tactile feel to them, so as long as they're reliable, I'm sure they'll be fine. For keycaps, I tried a few different store-bought options, but in the end, I ended up printing my own. The overly simplified shape just seemed to fit the rest of the build nicely. I made one key larger and in a contrasting color. This is more of an aesthetic choice than anything else. The case was designed to be as compact as possible. It's made from an upper and lower half. The mounting plate will slide underneath the upper half and rest against this ridge here. This chamber is to protect the Arduino. The cutout here is for the cable to pass through. I rounded the corners to soften the box look just a little bit and added a slight radius to the upper edge. The bottom plate kind of just holds everything else in place. These pillars here sandwich the mounting plate firmly against the ridge on the upper housing. Everything stays in place with just friction. Originally I was going to use set screws, but the friction held it together pretty good so they were ditched for simplicity. With the design set, it was time to send the files to the 3D printer and start building. I start with printing the case. Nothing fancy with the material, just plain PLA. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the quality. There are some minor styrations visible. Here's a couple more views that hopefully showed a bit better. But overall, it's looking pretty good. I still need to remove the supports, but I think it will clean up quite nicely. For the finishing, I kept it pretty simple. Just a quick light sand, one coat of primer, and two coats of black paint. And here they are fully dry. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the finish. There are some minor imperfections, but nothing too bad. You can see the styrations a little bit through the back plate here. I decided not to paint the mounting plate. It won't really be visible anyway, and I was worried the thickness of the paint might cause issues with the fit up. I printed the keycaps with a resin printer. I couldn't really think of an interesting way to film it, so here they are. I left most of the keys unpainted. I really like the way they looked straight out of the printer. Here's a closer look at that finish. I primed and spray painted the long key red. I was really happy how this came out. I think the red adds a nice contrast with the gray and black. I was so happy with it that I decided to paint one of the square keys red as well. There we go. Much better. I test the fit of the switches. No issues here.
and then test the fit of the printed case. Not too bad. Everything is looking good, so it's time to move over to the fun part, the soldering. I start by laying down a mat to protect my desk. Then I turn on a fan to blow the fumes away from my face. For soldering iron, I have this unit from Weller. This is definitely overkill for someone with my skill level, but I have access to it, so why not use it? I also grab some wire, wire cutters, solder, and some double-sided tape. I start by attaching the Arduino to the mounting plate with double-sided tape. As I'm doing this, I make sure the pinholes on the Arduino are lined up perfectly with the holes in the mounting plate. I'm going to be feeding wires up through these so any misalignment will cause problems. The first wire I feed through is the ground wire. I feed it up from the bottom and through one of the grounding pins, or I guess the holes that pins would be attached to. I'm not really sure if there's a name for these, I'm just going to keep calling them pins. I solder in place on the top, making sure I'm only getting solder on one pin. This view is a little fuzzy, but it's probably for the best because my solder joints are pretty ugly. I flip the plate over and start connecting the wire to the switches. I bend the wire so it rests in contact with one of the pins, add a drop of solder, and move on to the next switch. I snake the wire back and forth until I've connected to the first 12 switches. and then trim off the excess wire out of frame. For the 13th switch, I use a small piece of wire to bridge over to the main ground. Add a drop of solder here, and here, and then cut off the excess again. Now I need to connect the other side of the switches to the reed pins on the Arduino. I feed a coat of wire up from the bottom like before, Then do a test fit to determine the exact length of wire required. I want to keep the wires as short as possible. There's not a ton of room underneath the switches and overly long wires would just take up more space. A bit of solder on the top. And then a bit more on the bottom and that's one switch fully wired. I also made myself a diagram to keep track of which pin each switch is wired to. At the top, I number all the switches, and I write the pin numbers on the bottom as I go. After a bit of time and a few corrected typos on my diagram, I end up with something looking like this. I assemble the completed electronics into the case, first sliding the mounting plate into the upper housing, and then pressing the bottom plate in to hold it all together. I quickly press on the keycaps, and take a look at the finished product. Overall, I'm quite happy. I am thinking that maybe I should have painted the gray keycaps. They just don't look quite as nice as some of the painted surfaces, if it really bothers me, I guess I can paint them later. But overall, not too bad. I clean off my desk, grab my keyboard and mouse, plug in the macro pad, and open the SDK. The code here looks kind of complicated, but I'm actually just doing something simple over and over. I've added a few comments to the code, which will hopefully help anyone trying to follow along. Okay, first thing I did was initialize the keyboard library. I did need to download and install this library. There's already a bunch of videos on how to do this, so I won't go into the details here. Next, I declare some variables. Here I tell the Arduino which buttons are connected to each pin. This is the info I wrote down as I was connecting the wires. Below, I declare variables for the button states. By state, I mean if the key is or isn't being pressed. 
And finally, I declare variables for the previous button states. This will allow the code to check if the buttons have just been pressed or just been released. Next, I move on to the void setup part of the code. This is the part that runs once and gets everything set up for the main loop. With Arduino, you need to declare pin modes. This tells the Arduino what to expect from each pin. All of my pins are inputs, which is what I'm declaring here. I'm using the internal pull up command to take advantage of the internal resistors on the Arduino. Otherwise, I would have had to add one for each button on the circuit. I initialize the keyboard library and it's onto the void loop. That's the part of the code that will keep repeating. Here I'm reading the pins to see if any buttons are currently being pressed. I then need to compare this to the previous value. For example, here for button 1, I'm first checking to see if the button state is low, meaning currently being pressed, and if the previous button state was high, or not being pressed. If both are true, then it asks for a keyboard input, in this case, a 1. I also added a 50 millisecond delay. Depending on exactly how you want your macro pad to behave, this may or may not be required. Below is the same concept, but this time I'm checking to see if the key has been released. Otherwise, it would hold down the button indefinitely, which would be less than ideal. The code is exactly the same for the rest of the buttons. The only thing that changes is the button being looked at and the specific keyboard input being asked for. At the bottom here, I set the previous button state equal to the current button state, and the code repeats from the top of the void loop. I give it a quick test to make sure everything is working as expected. And it is. As nice as it is to have everything working, the MacroPad isn't super useful at the moment. The whole idea is to create single inputs for complex tasks, so that's what I'm going to do next. One of the programs I plan to use the most is SolidWorks, so I'll start by making a hotkey for the Smart Dimension function. I open SolidWorks, and click Settings, Customize, then Keyboard. I find Smart Dimension in the list, and set the hotkey to Control shift i As long as the selected combination isn't already bound to something, it'll work just fine. I then go back to the SDK and change the keyboard.press command to these three keys. I also update the keyboard.release command and re-upload the code. I go back to SolidWorks to give it a try. I'll just test on a simple sketch. Moment of truth. And it works! I can tell by the icon change that it did what it was supposed to do, and just like that, I have a working hotkey. Overall, I'm really happy how this turned out. The small form factor is perfect for my desk, and the aesthetic goes really nicely with the rest of my setup. As I continue to use this, I'll figure out which hotkeys work best, and also decide on which features I want to include in version 2. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next video.